This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, there we are. How are you, everybody? This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and we go on from now until... Uh, the cock crows at midnight. No, the cock crows actually in the morning. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, welcome to our fine program. And uh, we're going to get to our citizens panel in about a half an hour from right now. But uh, let's go out to the left coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful face that is... Show me the profile. Show me the profile. There we go. The profile that is Will Durst. Hello, Will. How you doing, old man? What's going on? Oh, nothing much is going on. I'm just, uh, you know, we're we're in the throes of uh, the beginnings of winter here in New York. Ah, uh, uh, you can feel the icy tentacled fingers dripping down your spine. Something like that. How are yeah. you doing? Uh, it's all good. I just got back from North Carolina. I did my boomer show. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause yeah, they would not want to hear all oh, my living God. Uh, they would not want to hear what I have to say about, uh, Trump or any of this. Oh, oh, so, it's, uh, it's, but I'm doing that this week, this week, tonight I'm at the marsh and then tomorrow I'm in Fresno city college and then Thursday I'm in Sonoma and then Saturday I'm in Newark. Oh, really? Okay. So you're 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 a busy man. California. You're a busy man. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, um, um, uh, so, uh, yeah. You say you can't. You you say you couldn't talk about Trump in certain areas. I mean, what happens? Do you lose them, or uh, do they boo you, or do they? What do they do if you do? You know, it's kind of funny because uh, I I I don't know what I did, but uh, I can make pretty much anybody laugh. Yeah. Uh, if they come into the show, they will laugh. I mean, even if they're huge Trump supporters, but they resent the fact afterwards that they laughed because just of the way that I, I crafted the show and it starts out generic and then I, I catch them and it's like, uh, a little trap, and and then I make them laugh, and they they somehow get resentful of the fact that I made them laugh. At uh, so it's an it's an odd uh, it's an odd chemistry. Do you kind of have to feel the audience out? I mean, in other words, to see if you can get away with that stuff later on in the act. So you just drop have, little pellets I, here and there. I have many Doppler jokes. In my uh, <laughs> radar, that yeah. I could tell yeah. where they're going to go just based on that reaction to that joke. Hell, I could tell from the murmur from the murmur of the crowd before the show whether or not it's going to be a good one. Yeah. Oh, oh look, at kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, <laughs> hey, that's a cute face. It is. That's a great cat face. It's Eloise. Yeah, and Eloise looks like she knows she's looking into the camera. She does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she and I have the same color eyes. And of course, she's always got a pest to you. <coughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just... How many cats again? Three? Two. 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 Anyway, um, uh, you know, I mean, the thing is that as a comedian, even if you're not a political comedian, uh, Trump becomes a good uh, a good uh, uh, source for jokes. I mean, there's he's like he's like who is it? I was talking to I think it was Rob Schneider who said he doesn't pull any more Trump jokes because he feels it's like shooting fish in a barrel. It's too easy. A lot of people that told me that Scott Capurro says that every time he brings up Trump in the United Kingdom, people roll their eyes and go, oh, not this again. Yeah. Why don't you center your face a little more in the picture? Can you do that? Does, sure. oh, oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Anyway, uh, in the, in the, in, when he brings him up in the, in the UK, what happens? 
people roll their eyes and go, oh, not this again, that they're tired of it. They're tired of it. Enough it might be a, Trump burnout. Trump, it's enough. Enough is enough already, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I've had Trump burnout in a way, you know. But <laughs> but he never let you forget he's around. You know, I mean, it, there were there were a week that would go by you didn't hear much about Obama, you know, and then Obama would do something there'd be news. And then it's another quiet period. In other words, when Obama made news, it was because he did something, not because he said something or wrote something or became insane about something. And, and then this whole trip to the to Asia. Well, the same is true with George W. Bush. After a while, you could almost forget that George W. Bush was running the country, that the country was being run by the the not as smart as his brother, uh, <laughs> son of the former president. Yeah. You know, you would just forget about it. And then maybe two weeks later, you know, he'd do something. But with Trump, it's every day. Every yeah. day. I mean, he was he was 12 time zones away. And so stuff was happening when he – and and – and it went out, and he was he was playing nice with others, and he was doing fine. And then, <laughs> then he meets Putin, and he says, Putin said that uh, he didn't do nothing, <laughs> and I trust him. You trust the KGB agent over your intelligence, yeah. So yeah, yeah. somebody yeah, said always... somebody said that the these countries have learned how to play Trump for a sucker, and the way they play him for a sucker is they compliment him. Yeah, and then he will he will do anything they want. I mean, he even liked Duarte in the Philippines. Well, he's oh yeah, he's always been a a big supporter of his because he's a strong man, you know. Yeah, we call them strong men. <laughs> yeah, you know, I uh, I I watched a documentary on the history of Trump and the family, more yeah. than anything else, and uh, the uh, the Drumps uh, go back uh, to Germany. So it's very Germanic, his entire approach to things. I mean, it, you know, it, 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 when we say it's Hitler-esque, yes, because it's Germanic. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a mess of, uh, of conflicting uh, nationalities and uh, personalities. And, and I, I, think, I, I think Melania cries herself to sleep every night. Well, I think she she always her eyes are always darting around like how do I get the fuck out of here? <laughs> or 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 she's every now and then she blinks and I think she's sending Morse code like help me I'm being held prisoner. You know. Uh but it's her bed she made it, you know. And uh she's the first I, the first non-speaking English first lady we've had. No. Oh, really? No. Do we have No. Yeah, I think Thomas Jefferson's wife didn't speak, or James Madison, one of those yeah, early. Yeah, they, they were all they were all immigrants at that point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. But I mean, you know, technically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, um, you know, the new national pastime seems to be outing guys. Uh, in, all right for sexual harassment. For sexual harassment, uh, and I was I've been waiting to talk to you about this, to see, get your take on it. I'm waiting for the dime to drop on me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Thank God I'm not famous. <laughs> well, uh, if, if I were still really famous or decently famous, uh, I might get outed by some crazy woman who I dated once who wants to get even with me. Yeah, yeah. You know, That's, but I've always been a gentleman. I mean, I would never be involved in that kind of thing because I never like to make people feel uncomfortable. Okay. No, I mean, I I totally agree with you. Why why how would you enjoy the relationship if it was only one-sided? You know, and I I understand that uh, you know, a personality trait of these guys who were the abusers, you know, it's a power thing. But that's not my that's not my that's deal, not my you know? deal either. But all I'm saying but, is, but I, I, I want to say, 
that the women who are coming forward and saying that George Herbert Walker Bush touched their ass when he was 80, or one of them was last year when he was 92, somebody complained that he touched her ass. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. 92 years old. Yeah. Settle He down. wasn't touching it because it gave him a hard on. No. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ, settle yeah. down. Well, here's the one that I have trouble with, and, and people tend to disagree with me, but um, is Louis C.K. Now, here's why I disagree with the whole Louis C.K. thing. Because in his case, if you compare it to the Harvey Weinstein accusations and the Kevin Spacey accusations and even the John Heilman accusations, uh, uh it's not in the same fucking league. You know, he he didn't he didn't he didn't touch anybody, he didn't rape anybody. He even asked permission beforehand. Yeah, that's kind of a strange question to ask. Yeah. Do you mind if I pull out my penis and yeah. my ass? But, but, but then I say he was he was giving these women an option to say no. <laughs> who would who would believe he was serious? And then suddenly, yeah. boom. Yeah. Boom. And then when it happened, how come they didn't turn around and leave the room? Uh, so I imagine some of them did. In other words, he gave them full warning. Now, I'm not saying that what he did was proper. In Under no conditions is it proper. But is it worthy of ruining his career? You know... The problem, well... I mean, compared to all these other guys, if, if Weinstein is guilty of what they say, if Spacey is guilty of what they say, these were horrible, terrible people. But, you know, Louis C.K. pulled out his penis, you know? Thing is, we're all uh, comics, especially comics. I mean, everybody in show business... Yeah. Is, is accumulated impressions, and you know what you think when you think of Brad Pitt. But especially with comics, we are your impression of us. Yeah. And that's that's why we use makeup and costumery, you know, because we want to yeah, mold that impression. And now, with Louie, this is going to be the number one or number two thing you think about him. Every time you see a Louis C.K. So, I mean, you think of, man, you gotta, you gotta be so, why would you? Why, why? I don't get it. Well, I mean, uh, okay, let me put it this way. Uh, if we have a friend who's an alcoholic, we try to get him to go to AA, don't we? We, we, well, we, we, we take we, pity on him and we, we take it as a sickness. Yeah. How come this isn't put in that same category, especially the Louis C.K. thing? Because, again, I say that I find it so different from all the other cases uh, that because the, nobody was nobody was raped, nobody was touched, nobody was groped. No, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He didn't show up in his bathrobe and say, here, suck my dick. You know, he just said. Oh, you mind if I pull it out? And he, he, had, I, I always, I said on the air the other night. At least he was a gentleman, you know. <laughs> I mean, he asked for permission ahead of time. Why nobody said no? Why they that, stayed in no, the room while we, it was oh, happening? Many, we don't know how many times this happened. I don't think it happened five times. I think this happened a lot of oh, times. It could have happened a hundred times. All I'm saying is, why didn't they turn around and walk out? And then the answer I get from women is, well, because he was a power figure and they felt powerless to leave. Well, then what are you doing? Are you saying that women are weaker than men and they, they're such fragile human beings that they, that they can't just look at a guy and, and look at his dick and laugh? No, you you're know? being purposefully obstinate. I mean, you, you know what it's like in different different levels of your career. He never did this to a headliner. He did it to an opening act or a middle act. He never did it to a fellow headliner. He didn't do this to Kathleen Madigan. You know, he did it to people who were under him. You know what the, uh, the, well, uh, he, the for power instance, his, structure he, in a comedy club he, is his, his partnership uh, in, in a lot of his stuff has been with Pamela Adlin. And 
she just yesterday said, I'm appalled by all of this and I'm never going to do business with him again. Now, she was he was literally her partner in business, okay? And she didn't, I guess, ever come against this problem. Otherwise, she probably would have. Well, I've been hearing about this problem for the last two years. With him? Yes. Uh, yeah. I've been, I've been reading stuff here and there and 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 on the web and uh, mostly yeah i've i've read you know rumors and and two unnamed women and, and now finally hey did you read, uh, read uh, the sunday new york times lori kilmartin had a piece in there no did you read that no you know lori kilmartin yeah i know lori kilmartin yeah yeah it was a great piece and what was it about this whole situation yeah and, it was about the power structure and what and, did she and what did and, she say she says that every woman in comedy that she knows of uh, will there's there's some gap in her career because there's a club owner that she knows that she will not work for or there's an agent she will not call. And so that, you know, they have these things that they don't have the same kind of opportunity because they have to willingly give up shit in order to progress because there are guys like this everywhere okay but there are also gay uh club owners and there are also gay um uh uh, no, uh agents no there aren't there's gay agents but yeah. there's yeah there's no gay club owners you sure of that <laughs> well, you have to ask if, if i'm sure of it means that the ratio is a it's not your normal right. But what I'm saying percent. is, what I'm saying is, there are agents and so on who are gay, and I'm sure this happens to guys too. You know, I, I, I'm in fact, um, I, I think it was again Rob Schneider who said there was this one very big mo motion picture producer who he met with, who asked him to get down on his hands and knees and try and suck him off. You know, he said he got up and walked out. But, you know, this goes on with males as well. And yet uh, we don't, it, it, this hasn't been the concentration of the effort. Most of the Me Too's are women. And it doesn't just happen to women. I got to tell you, I mean, as a young man who was in the theater, uh, there were directors who came on to me who were gay. When the, but when they found out I wasn't gay, they backed off. You know, Most but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, and the other thing about guys is, let's say, okay, um, I could think of maybe one or two women who were crazy enough to make these accusations towards me, although they were totally the aggressors. I, you know, in fact, one of them I didn't even really like, okay? But they could suddenly just say it, okay? Uh, Oh, Bennett had sex with me, and he gave me drugs ahead of time, and 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 now she's made the accusation. Who are they going to believe? Who are they going to put the most weight on in their in this scenario? The accuser well, or the person being accused? Well, if she's a civilian and you're you're a person in the limelight. I mean, you know, just the equal weight of having your name besmirched, uh, it's it's bad against you. Yeah, you know? even though I may not have ever done it. Right, you are not afforded, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I love to tell the story about how I, well, I don't love to tell it because I wish it had never happened, but I love to tell the story about how I, uh, uh, a long time ago, had a call come to me from a guy who said, you got my daughter pregnant. And I said, and he said, who is it? And I said, who's your daughter? And he named the woman, the daughter. And I said, never heard of her. He said, but ah. she's but she uh, she's pregnant. She told me you were the father. I said, well, I got to tell you, I don't even know this woman. I don't know where this this notion comes from. <laughs> and and finally, he I got a call a couple of days later, and the father said she admitted it wasn't you. Just she listened to you every morning. It seemed like a convenient name to name. <laughs> well, you know, had that continued to court. It, had that happened in this day and age, I could be out of work over that and I didn't even do anything. And that's why I'm kind of sensitive about this because I'm in show business, you're in show business, and 
This could have happened to us from some crazy lunatic. Well, it's like the Kevin Spacey thing in the Nantucket bar. Yeah. The, the kid was 18. Oh, we feel bad for the 18-year-old kid who's pretending he's 21 so he can drink. He had fake ID. Yeah. And then Spacey is buying him drinks. And the and the, the mother said, oh, she, and he bought him drink after drink after drink. Well. The kid had to he, drink him. He, yeah, he didn't drink him. <laughs> and, and then he put his hand down his pants. Okay. And and then the kid ran away. Okay. <laughs> I don't get it. What's well? Yeah, you're you're saying no crime, no foul. Was what you're saying? No you're, well, harm, no foul. Yeah. No harm, no foul. You put you put your hands down his pants. That may be broaching that area, but yet maybe the kid was giving every indication that he was interested by drinking exactly. the drinks and hanging exactly. out with him and flattering him and goggling at him because he's Kevin Spacey. Now I don't. I'm sure Kevin Spacey is an absolute fucking creep. I, you know, I just you just get that feeling that he's he's a mean he's a mean mean homosexual. Okay, I'm sure among his clan he was known as a mean homosexual. Uh, and so, in a lot of cases, like in the case of Weinstein, I said that if everybody loved Weinstein. He'd be safe right now because people would be coming to his defense and saying, you know, maybe he needs treatment, maybe he needs help. But nobody liked this guy. This guy was the way the guy that everybody in Hollywood was waiting to fall so they could just pile on him. Pile on. And and so I believe all the accusations are probably true. But more so, there's nobody there to defend him. That's the difference. Let's also go back to one other case. This same thing didn't ruin Woody Allen because it happened at a time when there wasn't a feeding frenzy. Right. Right. You know, if it happened to Woody Allen right now, that's it. No more movies, Woody. We're out of the Woody Allen business. I mean, Louis C.K. lost FX. He lost Netflix. And he lost, uh, they, even, they, they, even, they even took him out of an HBO special to raise no, money. He scrubbed the network yeah. of, that and means all of his old specials are no longer uh, downloadable. And here, here's the Kevin Spacey deal. Uh, he was he did just did a movie that's supposed to be out in December. That's one month away. They've gone in and replaced him with Christopher Plummer. They went back just in the last week and reshot all the scenes that Kevin Spacey was in. Wow. Now, you know. I think the public is understanding enough to know that if Kevin Spacey is in a film, this film wasn't made after this whole deal. You know, just release the thing. Release Louis C.K.'s film. I'd love to see that film. It looks interesting, you know. Uh, release it and let the public decide whether they want to be in the Louis C.K. business, not you. But everybody's doing this to cover their ass, to make themselves look good. Well, because people will call for boycotts. Yeah. Women call for boycotts and they're afraid and they've heard the rumor or something that women are, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. It makes a financial sense because th they're not in the art business. You know, this is not about art. This is about commerce. This is about responding to stockholders yeah. and the quarterly dividends. That's that's all it but is. But isn't it, it also... A insurance has made... Everything, you know, everything has to be so safe now. You can't have not even the hint of a whisper of a, of a moon shadow yeah. of, of an accident. I, my question is, whatever happened to the presumption of innocence? You know, that, that you don't make these decisions until this has been proven. It's a pendulum swing, Alex. It's a pendulum swing. First... Nobody believed the women. Now no, nobody believes the men, and and it's gonna. It's hopefully it'll it'll get back down here where where each case will be taken upon its merit. But but you have to admit that that colleges went crazy by by trying to protect 
uh, the students' rights, and and they made it hard for a woman who was sexually assaulted. Look, I they made yeah, it hard absolutely. for her. Look, women for years. Look, we. we okay, I'm going to bring up the biggest one. Natalie Wood was raped by Kirk Douglas. Pretty well a known fact in Hollywood. What? Uh, the family oh. denies it, but she told everybody. She was 15 at the time. She went in for an audition, supposedly, and he raped her. All right? It, Kirk Douglas? Yes. Wow. Nobody's going to go after Kirk Douglas today because he wouldn't remember it. He can't remember anything. <laughs> You know, uh, 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 it, it is it is rumored that Louis B. Mayer had sex with Shirley Temple. <laughs> Let's go on and on and on about this. No, but, no, no. But it's, it, it's hard to believe that these cliches and stereotypes are are so firmly cemented in concrete. Yeah, and that. Yeah. that but it's just. It's it's the it's the goal. But they're I mean, all the rumors. Is- they're all rumors because they never went beyond that. Right. You know, yeah. they never were allowed to go beyond that. Natalie Wood's mother probably wouldn't let her talk about it to people because she wanted her daughter to keep working. Right. You know, and and uh, consequently, uh, uh, on the Shirley Temple story, I heard they split them up. I heard the mother went to one room and Shirley went to another room. And both rooms that they were in, they both got a hit on. <laughs> That's, what <I> <laughs> That's what you heard. But all I'm saying is, look, women have been the uh, suffering this for years, and so have men as well uh, at the hands of homosexual directors and producers. Men, and, men are uh, taught to take the knocks and keep moving, you know. And this is, uh, we're not women. We're not, uh, we don't understand what it's like to be a little bit smaller in stature, to know that men are, are built to be yeah. brawny and, and to be physically intimidating. And we don't know what it's like to be intimidated in that we don't understand. Guys, it's a different thing. You, yeah. you take the knock and you move on. You don't, you don't sit around and, and that's what we're taught. And, yeah. and so we don't speak about it a lot. But... <laughs> It happens, yeah. It happens to guys. Yep. You know. And all, all, all of women. this behavior, whether it's Louis C.K.'s or whether it's Weinstein's, are terrible, but I think they should carry different weight. I think that by the fact that we have made such a big deal out of the Louis C.K. thing only minimizes Weinstein's accused I crimes. Agree. You know, I agree. You know, because this guy just whipped out his dick. Weinstein, on the other hand, was far more aggressive and and was using his power far more than Louis C.K. ever was. So wh- and he would try to screw people, <laughs> so to speak, yeah. try to screw people who didn't go with the program. That's right. So, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, but uh, uh, thank God we're not that big and nobody can accuse us of anything. So, <laughs> you know. I mean, I can't think of anything in my life where I could be accused of it. I was never aggressive in that way, okay? I would, in fact, I was lack of aggressive. I would, a woman would have to send up a flare that said, will you fuck me before I would even make the approach, okay? Yeah, I, 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 I like the whole blimp, you know, with the LED readout on the yeah, bottom. Yeah, they, they would have to do that in order for me to, to you know. So I, I look at my past, and I, I don't worry about any of that, but I still say there were enough crazy women in that bunch that one yeah. of them could just come forward, say something, and the minute they do, you as the male are not believed and she's believed, you know. And and what do you, what do you, what are you going to do about that? And I so as a sh- as being in show business myself or the fringes of it in radio, being in show business, uh, I I feel that could have happened to me, even though I've never been guilty of anything. And I think you right. probably feel so you don't want to, you don't want to come down too hard on on Louis because yeah. you have yeah you're right there have to be gradations you know there have to be levels you can't lump everybody you can't lump hitler in with with the shoplifter you know mm, well that's what you're doing here yeah really you know 
Yeah. Hey, listen, I just looked at the clock and we've even run over here. It's been I'm so sorry much... about that. No, that's it's, it's no, fun that's... talking to you, man. Oh, yeah, it's always fun talking to you. And I want to do it again in a couple of weeks if you're if you're up for it. Totally. Up. Probably do okay. it during the Christmas season. We can uh, sing Christmas carols together and <laughs> what have you. Ladies and gentlemen, the smiling face from San Francisco of Will Durst. Yeah. Oh, there's San Francisco. And we will leave on that note. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Well, thank you very much uh, to Will Durst for joining us this evening. Uh, we love having Will on, and we love uh, being able to see that lovely view of my hometown outside his window. Well, that's the... Uh, that's the Sunset District he lives in, so it's a slightly different uh, different thing. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, let's see here, let's open up Skype. Uh, yeah, we have a thing called the Citizen Panel, and people call us and talk with us using the Citizen Panel. Now, I'm a little tired tonight because I, I was woken up this morning at, uh, at, uh, like 9.15 by, <laughs> by Fios. Because last night in the middle of the night, I, I had a little bit of a problem, and so I called them about it, and, and, and they wanted to, I, I guess I didn't answer the phone. I just listened to the message, wanted to know how I felt about the service. Well, to begin with, they made me go in and turn on the television set in the bedroom while my lovely wife was asleep. And now she won't let me forget that, okay? Uh, and uh, they never solved the problem. And I finally got it solved this morning by calling somebody, and I got somebody in New Jersey rather than in New Delhi, and um, um, we got it fixed. It, it was a very stupid thing. Whenever you went to one of the, the premium channels, it said, uh, you're enjoying a free preview, blah, blah, blah. If you'd like to subscribe, hit this button. And I'm going, I subscribe to this. What am I getting this for? And finally, I found out later on that what the story was is that we um, uh, we we were uh, what was I going to say? We're we, uh, uh, I'm I'm having a little bit of a problem here. I can't understand why on Safari this thing is like so far behind, and I don't understand it. So let me see here. Oh, the, here we go. There we go. All right. Uh, no, so I, 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 you know, I found a, a guy told me, oh, well, they're running a promotion now. Y you're not affected. You're subscribed to everything. And I went, well, that's rather stupid to have that thing. It was annoying, too. It would come on and stay there for about a minute while you're trying to watch a movie or some show or whatever. So, you know. Anyway, I'm waiting for some people to call. The phone lines are open. They've been open for about two minutes right now. And I don't know what it takes to get the, get you to call, but sometimes it takes a while for people to do it. And um, you know, we were talking with uh, with with Will about the whole harassment thing that's going on, uh, or as I like to think of it, the harassment fad. You know, it's like uh, we, we couldn't be happy with Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> you know. The news was always looking for the next famous person that they could, they could, you know, rat on. And now there are people jumping into the fray, I'll tell you later when I read some of the items that I have here, who are starting to sue. And they're people you never heard of before. They're Jane Doe's, you know. They're, they don't even have the guts to say who they are. It's, it's, it's scary. It's scary. Uh, I'm, I'm a very fair person. And part of that fairness is that I really think that if somebody's going to accuse you of something, uh, people should give you the benefit of innocence until proven guilty. Now, if you admit to it, that's another thing. I mean, Louis C.K. admitted that what he did, he did was, and he did it, and it was wrong. And uh, I thought that was very decent of him, actually. I mean, everybody said to me, Oh, yeah, he wrote a really good thing. That was really terrific. But he wrote it, and um, uh, but he's a good writer. And he, he, so, so he can convince people. Well, what, because he's a good writer? Because he can write good material? 
that wasn't that 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 thing he wrote wasn't to be taken as it as as, as what it should have been, and that is as a very remorseful kind of mea culpa. So I don't know. I just I, I and I I think uh, Durst put it best when he said you can't equate a guy who robs with Hitler. They're both crimes, uh, and, but you can't you just you, you can't compare them together. In other words. The weight of Louis C.K.'s situation doesn't really uh, equal the weight of Harvey Weinstein's accusers. Uh, the, 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 the crime, if uh, it is a crime, and uh, if, if proven so, is much worse than Louis C.K. is accused of. Louis C.K. is accused of being maybe oafish, of being in bad taste, of uh, embarrassing other people, but he certainly didn't molest them, didn't try and sleep with them, didn't try and, you know, I mean, you don't hear anybody coming forward and saying, you know, Louis C.K. raped me. You hear that about Weinstein. You hear it about Kevin Spacey. You hear it about a lot of these other people, but you don't hear it about Louis C.K. And I... I Ah, guess what? Jeff Stein is calling. Thank God, Jeff. Thank you for calling, Jeff. I appreciate you calling. Because if you weren't calling, I'd be sitting here talking to myself forever. You know, you got to turn on your microphone. Your microphone isn't on. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Oh, that's great. I get a caller, but he's got, his microphone isn't working. No, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Oh, no. There, there we go. There we go. Whatever you yeah. did there, that did it. This yeah. speaker thing doesn't work. The, the earphones don't work? Yeah. But you can hear me, right? Oh, wait a minute. Now I don't hear you. Now you're on, Now I can't hear you again. What? What is it? You, you click something that made it work. All right. This there, is a... there you go. There you go. But uh, it seems like it's uh, something is wrong about it. But I don't know what to do about it. Yeah. Whatever I try, it doesn't seem to work. Well, you, but well. you just flipped something there that made it work. Yeah, I did, and I I unplugged this. Oh, oh, you unplugged that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But then then I couldn't hear you, and you had to f click on something else. Right. Yeah. At the same time. You know what it could be. It could be that where you put your earphones in really wants one of those earphones with the microphone. Yeah. I you know, and what you're doing is you're 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 cutting off the uh, I don't know the w w what microphone you're using the one in the in the laptop. Yeah. 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 So what happens is when you plug that in, it disconnects that microphone and is looking for that other microphone. So you might want to get one of those little headsets or whatever with the microphone. I don't have to try that. That's probably what's doing it. But anyway, but actually, the one thing that I heard today yeah. on TV mm -hmm. was a, a guy who, uh, I guess he's a, a senator and he wants to become another senator. He wants to, he wants to keep his job, but he's a Republican yeah. and he's from Alabama. What state is he? Down south. Well, not Alabama. That's where the Roy Moore thing is taking Yeah, the place. Roy. So I, I found something new about Roy these days what's that he's not allowed in the mall yeah that i heard that <laughs> what does that mean well if you ever go to the mall that's where all the kids hang out yeah yeah no he was well, he was he, they were told he, to watch out he, for him and to not let him into the mall and officially he was unallowed <laughs> not, this is not this week this has been for years yeah he's not allowed in the mall because he pulls around with the young kids. Yeah, well, you know what's you know what's gonna you know what's gonna happen in Alabama. I'm sure of it. Hello, Tony. Gee, imagine hey, it's to, uh, to, uh, where where's everybody else tonight? Well, I don't care. I, well, I, you guys are great. You know uh, the thing about the mall um, uh, thing is that you can throw all this empirical evidence at the people of Alabama, and they'll go, "Well, a child molester is better." than a democrat <laughs> that's, that's, that's true that's man. really that's their true. that's really their attitude down there 
That's a little hard. What, what were you saying? <laughs> that is terrible. What were you saying, Jeff? He's also a Christian. No, there it's a very religious uh, state. Yeah. And well, he's, no. Look, that's he's like a creepy. He says he's a Christian. Obviously, he doesn't act like one. You know. <laughs> so I mean, that's that's ridiculous. He wrote in the yearbook. My mother said, Alex. What? That guy wrote. My mother said the guy wrote in the kid's yearbook. That well, they just, they proved that that was not his handwriting. Oh, okay. That's yeah, good. but th that that was a fake. Oh, all right. But, but you, you know, I mean, uh, do, does he look like a guy who would go chasing fourteen-year-olds when he was My thirty-two? Wants to catch <laughs> Anything's possible with these born-again Christians. You know, <laughs> they're the most hypocritical assholes in the world. I liked what uh, Jimmy Carter's wife, um, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, I forget, uh, I forget her name now. But Jimmy Carter's wife, they were interviewing her, and they said, are, have you been, are you born again? And she says, no, I got it right the first time. <laughs> that <is true. laughs> How many times can you be born? Uh, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. a lot of being born. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Born again Christian, yeah, I'm born again Christian. Well, I that means they got two birthdays. I guess Roy Moore is going to have to be born again. <laughs> you know. Yeah, how could you be born again if you're already born? That is true. Oh, because you're you're re you know you're you're born again because you've now been born into the body of Christ, oh. and all that other bullshit. It's weird. It's very strange. It's like they hypnotized. Thank God I'm Jewish and I don't have to do anything. That's true. You still. You know, I don't have to believe anything. I just. I'm. Anyway. What are you? I'm Jewish. Okay, you're Jewish. Okay, you're you're a Lonsman, You know. <laughs> it's the easiest thing to do. Being Jewish is very you easy. You want to come back anyway. It's not difficult, is it, Jeff? Not at all. No, I mean you can make it as difficult as you want to. You can go the yarmulke route with the with the payas and the and the and the trench coats. Uh, you could do that deal, but you you don't, you don't have to. Although those, the Hasidim think don't think you're really that Jewish if you don't do that, but you know. I know. And then they'll try and sell you a diamond ring. Uh, I saw. Oh, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phil will try to sell you a rug, though, Alex. Which yeah. <laughs> Where is Phil tonight? Is he off, taking? He's the, probably waiting. He's probably sending you emails. Is he taking the night off or something? Or did oh, he he's probably that? getting information for you. No, I thought he said he wasn't going to be here tonight. I think. Oh, all right. That wasn't true. Yeah. I, I was wondering if he's still in Florida. Did he ever come back? You know, oh. uh, yeah, maybe he drowned. <laughs> That's your golf man. <laughs> I still can't see him scuba diving golf up there. Well, he's buoyant enough. <laughs> but I mean, all that water pressure, I mean, I just don't, he doesn't seem like he's fit enough. I don't want to say it like that, but it's kind of scary even with the tank. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I don't think, I, I, I've known guys who are heavy. And I mean, my old friend Penn Gillette scuba dived, oh, yeah. scuba dove, scuba doven. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is that what is that what a, 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 a Orthodox Jew does? Is uh, scuba doven? Uh, that is a joke that only the Jews out there will get right now, folks. Uh, but no, he he was kind of on the heavy side, and he he's to, tall, right? Alex? Yeah, tall. He used, he, he looks tall on the TV show. You know, it's it's a great place for a fat person to. Uh, to sw go because the the light is a feather. Well, that's true. You know, I used to scuba dive. Did you really? Oh yeah, and I was certified and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's really it, depending upon where it is and and where the the water is being moved around. It's usually pretty easy to do it. Yeah, because you have the team. So you're able to actually to get it to go up and go down by yeah. adjusting pressure. You uh, don't have to do much. Here we go. Here come here comes the fat scuba diver. Uh, hello, Phil. Hey, good evening. Is everything working? Uh, it was all pulled apart. So uh, what was and I didn't and I didn't realize it. What was pulled apart? All my stuff. You know, uh, computer and everything was off. Why? Uh, Oh, because I had left for a week, so I, I shut everything down. And, well, uh, that just means turning it off, doesn't it? Hello, 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 hello to Michael, not, Cl uh, Michael Klein. Hello, Michael. I forget. Where are you from again? 
Uh, well, I grew up in Marin, but I'm here in uh, beautiful L.A. L.A., beautiful L.A. Where in Marin, by the way? San Rafael. Yeah, well, I was staying in Selma, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, we were separated by the Miracle Mile. Remember the Miracle Mile? It was a, it's a it's a mile long yeah, strip that goes from I used San to work Rafael. At that McDonald's. Yeah, it goes from San Anselmo to to San Rafael, and we always used to say it was a miracle if you got off that mile. Yeah. Do you do you remember the computer store was a bite? Oh, you, you know something. By, I, by the time computer stores opened in Marin, I wasn't living there anymore. I'm sure. You know, I was already elsewhere. So uh, anyway. Uh, uh, but anyway, oh, oh, uh, uh, so everything was pulled apart, Phil, you say? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm almost back. <laughs> but I mean, all, all you have to do when you go away is just turn stuff off. I did, but yeah, I took or the, you, the or, earphones. Or even better, you can leave it on. Uh, I took the earphones, uh, you know, I, it was all it was all off. I didn't realize it, so I had yeah, to turn it all yeah, back but on. You, uh, you know, when I go away, I leave everything on. I don't, yeah. I don't turn it off, you know. Uh, turning I, turning computers on and off puts more uh, stress stress on them than if you just leave them on. So anyway, uh, yeah. oh. M Michael is sitting back, savoring a very nice wine. Is that is that uh, some something a decent wine you're drinking there, Michael? Uh, it's excellent. I right here. It's uh. Let's see. You Petit Syrah called Concanon. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're frozen. I don't know why, but uh, you might stop. Yeah, I, got, I shouldn't be frozen. It, it, this is, turn this your is camera strange, on yes. and off. Oh, oh yeah. there. Phil's going to drive me nuts now. He's trying to frame himself perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, hang him in the house, Alex, in the foyer. Huh? <laughs> it's all, all part of the deal. Yeah. But well, it, uh, yeah, I uh, I got back from Florida. I'm uh, I'm not used to the time change again. Yeah, you know, now, now it's late. Uh, so, uh, and actually, I I fell asleep for a little while tonight after I got home from work. Yeah, but, well, uh, I I only got six hours sleep last night. So, do you do you notice the older you get uh, lately, the less sleep uh, you seem to need? Oh no, <laughs> you know I always want my eight hours. I, I want somehow it. I've got to get those eight hours. And today I didn't. I think I got six hours and 45 minutes total. What time do you go to bed? I, I go to bed. I want to go to bed at two. OK, ah. but I piddle around and piddle around and piddle around before I know it. It's it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's three o'clock. Yeah, I like the mainly because it takes me that long to masturbate now. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're frozen, Mike. Um, uh, I know. I'm trying to find the freaking button. The, oh, go uh, down to the bottom the, and just. Oh, look. there it is. Yeah, right. turn it off and then turn it back on. There you go. I had, I had the screen maximizing. The button wasn't there. Okay, so what 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 what, what kind of wine is that? It's a Concanon 2014 Petite Syrah. Uh -huh. This is uh, this is California, Livermore. Wow. Yeah. I wish I could say. I, yeah, I wish I could agree with you. That's excellent, but I know nothing about wine. A lot of the. Uh, it's not I was gonna say, do you miss do you miss the wine living in New York? But I guess not. Well, I, I you know I, there's only one line. There was only one wine that I ever really bought in great amounts because I liked it. It had a nice buttery taste to it. It was called Kistler, and it was out of uh, it was a uh, it was out of uh, uh, Napa, and it was really it was really quite good. I enjoyed it. But that's my that, – so whenever people would say, so what wines do you like? And I go, Kistler. And they go, oh, I had never heard of that. I said, well, it's a very fine, mild, buttery – and then I think it was a white wine of some sort. It wasn't a red what wine. It was buttery. Yeah, buttery, it was I was thinking Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Yeah. I think it was a Chardonnay. You're absolutely correct. Yes, I guess. What would I know from that? My, the, one in this, the person in this family is the wino is my wife. She sw every time we go out to dinner, it's two glasses of wine. Now, you know, when... Normal dinner? Huh? For me. 
It's normal for me. Yeah, but you know something? What they charge for a glass of wine is criminal. Yeah. Oh, you know, I mean, I that's, order I order a Diet Coke and it's two bucks. That's 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 bad enough as it is because I can get a whole bottle for a buck and a half. You know, it's a big profit center for restaurants. I know. But, you know, some of the restaurants that you go to, like I uh, do ninety million dollars a year, and and uh, you know they they make an incredible amount of money. Uh, and they keep telling us that their uh, their overhead is high and their profit margin is low, but uh, well, I mean, you, you know, restaurants go out of business all the time. Yeah, you know, I, I wanted to go. I I wanted to buy into a restaurant, and my my business manager's father was in the restaurant business. He owned a whole uh, series of restaurants and places in New York called the Russian Tea Rooms. I've and, heard of those. Yeah, and and he. Um, he also managed uh, the affairs of places like the upstairs and the downstairs and so on. And he said to me, he said, I wanted to buy into a restaurant that a guy I knew was starting. And he said, you do that, you go find another business manager. He wow. said, it, it, is, it is so easy to invest in a restaurant and so difficult to come out of it with any money. He said, you know... Uh, it says, how many times have you seen a restaurant where there are people lined up around the block to get into the restaurant, and two months later it's closed? You know, the, 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 you got to know how to buy. You have to anticipate what people are going to eat, how much of it they're going to eat, you know. And if you can't figure those things out accurately, you go bankrupt. He said, you don't want that business. He said, the only reason why people want to invest in restaurants is so they can then go into the restaurant they invested in. Oh, and now Yelp can make or break one of these. Oh, yeah. Restaurants. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I noticed, Alex? There's a little place down the block by my house that's like a pizza place. Yeah. My brother took me there. Yeah. And we watch people. They let you bring the wine in and open it up, this place. Well, do they charge, a, cor do they charge a corkage fee? I don't know, because we didn't have one. We were just watching. My brother said, oh, look, they brought their own wine. Wait, no, but, wait, you, 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 you can bring wine into any restaurant you want to, but they have the right to charge you what's called a corkage fee. Oh. Yeah. You know. The good ones will waive it. Yeah, uh, but, but you know. It's, especially if you uh, offer the waiter uh, uh, a glass of something really good. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's my move. Yeah. That's my move. <laughs> oh, because I know my business manager, my business manager, whenever we go out to dinner with him, Marin, goes and goes to his little wine cellar, gets a bottle of wine, and takes it with us. And we that he then pays a corkage fee. Uh, not a lot of money. Sometimes it's five bucks, ten bucks, something like that. And you you know, then you get to drink your wine instead of theirs. But my wife will do two glasses of wine, and that comes to about twenty five percent of the total bill for dinner. Right, you know, Ooh. yeah, you know, fifteen to twenty dollars a glass on average. No, uh, it's, it's actually it's actually I'd say the glass. average the average I've seen is about twelve, twelve huh. to twelve to fifteen, but probably more like twelve. I know, but I, I don't eat at McDonald's anymore. Uh, <laughs> I, go to, I like going to the diners. <laughs> well, you know, oh, I don't mind paying a corkage fee. <laughs> Billy, that's right. You eat at uh, Burger King now. Uh, <laughs> Wendy's. <laughs> Actually, oh, Wendy's. God. Well, like Marjorie it. said for my birthday, where do you want to go on your birthday? And I said, I don't know. She, I'll, I'll figure out a restaurant. And then she said, what about a hamburg uh, what, by going to like a, a hamburger place like McDonald's, you know, as a though. joke. And I said, go ahead. I don't care. You know, I mean, yeah. whether I'm sitting at, um, at, at Bapo's, which is a very fancy restaurant, or whether I'm eating at McDonald's, it's still filling my stomach with stuff. Have you have you eaten in McDonald's like, since you kind of changed your diet? No. All right. I and never ate at McDonald's before I changed my diet. You're going to come away with all like a salty feeling. It, it, that stuff is so <laughs> bad, and you don't. And, I can't you tell you. I think the last time I ever went to a McDonald's was in France, yeah. because I wanted to see what it was like in France. And I found out, you know, there's that smell that McDonald's has. Yeah. There's a certain yeah. McDonald's it's, smell. Yeah. It's um, off, yeah. I walked into a McDonald's in France, in the middle of France, in a little province in France. And 
there was it smelled just like a McDonald's back home. Yes, uh, yes, Mike. Uh, have you guys eaten at a, a In and Out Burger? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're a little overrated. Yeah. You know, to me, to me, to me, the French fries is less saltier. They don't put the salt like McDonald's. Well, does. I'm They'll I'm put off I'm put off French. by the Bible track on their cups. <laughs> You, you, uh, you know I've that. Never that. On the bottom I've of the cup, that. pick up the bottom of the cup. Look at the bottom of the cup, and along the rim it's of the cup really? is like uh, you know one of those things like Ezekiel, blah 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 blah, or whatever. You know? At least the rest on Sundays and serve gay people, and like Chick Fil A. Uh, Chick Fil A <laughs> serves gay people. That's not true. And uh, you know the reason they're not open on Sundays is because they want to give their uh, their employees. Right. A, a, well, you yeah. know, uh, look, look, uh, look I will hand it to somebody who claims to be a very religious organization who gives their people Sundays off. You know, I, I, I have nothing against that. I think that that's perfectly right. All I know is I, I don't particularly like Chick-fil-A, but uh, they're clean. Uh, their employees are friendly, and they want to make sure you have a good experience. Yeah, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, the only the only fast food place I went to over the years, in the last couple of years, was Popeyes, because yeah. their chicken like is terrific. Yeah, just don't keep it around for about uh, uh, overnight, and then oh, I don't keep it around. Don't same. keep it around for two hours. My yeah, is, yeah, really, it changes. Uh, you know, I've picked it up, brought it to work. Uh, or, you know, uh, on the way I was going somewhere, I grabbed it for lunch yeah. uh, to go, brought it back to the store, uh, you know, maybe 40 minutes later, uh, and it doesn't well, I taste mean, the try, same. Try that with a try McDonald's hamburger. If you get one that's just fresh off the grill, they're kind of okay. If you get one that's been sitting under that light for about three minutes, they suck. Yeah, well, uh, McDonald's, uh, you, you, when you're addicted to them, and I was for a while, where I couldn't, I couldn't drive past one without. Uh, it was either psychological or the smell of the thing. There was something about it. I, I was addicted to McDonald's. Well, the only, I, the only one you could get addicted to, in my opinion, uh, is White Castle. Oh, yeah. and I don't I'm know why. Everyone. How many people here know? Well, you know what we're talking about, Jeff. You know what we're talking about. Phil, you know what we're talking about, Tony. But yeah, I used to but, 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 movie theater. When but, I but, but Mike and I know what you're uh, talking about. I never had it. Though. But oh, the, but so the two Mikes I probably get a bag of them. I used to. You, but you have to get a bag of them. Yeah, yeah. They have frozen ones in the. Oh, the frozen ones are not good. No, I bought oh, the, the frozen fro ones are good. No, the frozen ones are fine. I bought the frozen right. ones at the store yeah, once. Yeah. I brought them home. I went, how good can these be? And you just put them in the microwave for a couple of minutes. Yeah. They come out tasting just, I mean, because to begin with, the White Castle burger is no, no great shakes. I but there's just something them about gross. them because you eat them like they're, you know. It's the onions and the, and the bread. What onions? The ones that are filling the holes in the meat? Right. <laughs> the sprinkle of onion. Yeah. Do you know they were oh, the first? Do you know? The movie do you know they were the like first? The, I, 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 the other day, somebody said they were the first hamburger place in America. Yeah, yes. Yes. I guess. Yeah. The first fast food. In one case one. people don't know what we're talking about, they're about yay big. If you're looking at us they're on square. video, I mean, they they were like yay big. They're, they're square. About, they're square, and they're about yay big. Okay. Right. I and, can get and, one. I think my mother might have one in the two fingers. two bites. If, go, if, if, go have go get one if you have one. Okay. See, she didn't need to get box. <laughs> yeah. Show the logo. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Alex, <laughs> I get them uh, frozen out of the uh, freezer, and they're not bad. Yeah. Uh, you just have to put a little ketchup with it. You know. You know. With yeah. It, nah, it, it, better. But the, but no, the I, thing is, there are certain foods that taste like shit. And somehow those are the ones that become addictive. I mean, there there is crappy food, and and White Castle is crappy food. There's no question in my mind about it. But it it's addictive. Because when I was a teenager, it was how many could you eat uh, in a minute? You know, uh, you, you go with your friends. Well, you apparently you were the winner, Phil. Oh, I was always the winner of eating. <laughs> 
Yeah. No, it's bring, your, it's, bring well. your, it's bring your pet to the uh, citizens panel day. First we had. <laughs> this is Penny. The first we had Will Durst with his cat. And now we have uh, uh, Michael with uh, Penny. Hello, Penny. Hello, doggy, doggy. She has, hey, hi. Uh, see, you are a dog person. Uh, oh, uh, let's see. Key Largo. Uh, the scuba diving. It was a was very good movie, and I enjoyed it with uh, Humphrey Bogart and uh, Lauren Bacall. Uh, in fact, that's oh, yes. what she said. You know how to whistle, don't you? Just put your lips together and blow. Right. Well, she, uh, oh, she ate it. What was blowing was uh, Maybe the that wind. was to have and have not. Maybe I'm current. wrong. What? What was blowing was the wind, the waves, and the current. Yeah. And uh, both days were a blowout. Uh, for uh, scuba diving, uh, I, um, the first day uh, I made it. I went down to the ship, but it was such an amount of work fighting the current, uh, which is normally, you know, at, at some points of the year there's no current. It's very, you know, relaxing. But uh, I was so beat up after the first dive, just getting down to the ship, hand over hand on on the line, pulling myself. Uh, when I got back up, I was totally exhausted. I actually skipped the second dive that day. And then the Sunday, uh, it was, it was more current. The waves were bigger. Uh, I, I got down about eight feet down the line and I said, you know, this, this is not fun. So I, I went back up and I said, I'm done for the day. Uh, I, and so I, that I, was my scuba diving. I went uh, snorkeling when I was in, uh, Belize. Yeah. And, um, uh, I got into the water, and then I, you know what I couldn't do? I'm a, I was, I'm a very good swimmer. I was always a great swimmer. Uh, but you put a pair of fins on me, and I can't stand it. Really? Yes. Makes life easy. No, I can swim better without them. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, because of your web feet. Yeah, because I have these enormous feet. Exactly. In fact, I, I, I don't fit into the fins. No. So I, I had to go back in the boat. But now, at that point, I was fat enough that I couldn't get up the ladder. <laughs> and, and, and people were trying to help me, but I couldn't do it. So I just got back in the water and swam to shore. And I said, fuck it. <laughs> Try doing it with 45 pounds of gear on. And then, right. and then Marjorie, Marjorie on the other hand, went and scuba dove so she could go down and see these coral reefs. And she said they were all just bleached. They were dead. Uh, you know, uh, Stephen Frank, who is the uh, editor of uh, Dan Magazine. Dan is an uh, underwater um, uh, service that uh, provides medical and, uh, and and other things for scuba divers. Yeah. He's a very knowledgeable guy. Uh, just wrote an article how the uh, bleaching and the dying of the Great Barrier Reef is a bit of fake news. That there are some areas where there's bleaching, but like with most things, uh, the media concentrates on those and doesn't show all the other healthy areas uh, that um, uh, aren't are, haven't been affected for one reason or another. Yeah. So uh, so when they say that the that the Great Barrier Reef is dead, they're really overstating what's going on. Yes, there are some areas where there is bleaching and where uh, uh, there, there's some issue going on. Well, why don't you go not, to the Great to... Barrier Reef and come back and tell us that? Well, I, I when I was there in 2003, and I took. Uh, a thousand pictures of uh, of uh, the reef life and, and so forth that, that I have. Uh, so when I go back, I'm going to again photograph. Uh, I'll, I'll do similar areas and I'll photograph those areas. And I'm going to look and, and see. But I, I can rely on Stephen Frank uh, as a uh, as an expert and as someone that uh, wouldn't be supporting. Uh, uh, this uh, thing if it wasn't true. The Great Barrier Reef, to correct me if I'm wrong, is the largest single organism on the planet. Right? That's correct. But you know where you were in Belize was the second. Well, it was bleached. Uh, <laughs> as long as it didn't bubble out. She said it was very disappointing. She said it was very, very disappointing. Well, uh, they probably took her where all the tourists go and step on the on the coral. Yeah, you know, uh, you, you know, it, Belize. I don't know if you've ever been to Belize. It's awfully low I, rent. It's really, really yeah, yeah. 
That's it's uh, one of those places that they say it's good to retire to if you're an American. And uh, yeah, well, a ask John McAfee if that's true. Yeah, well, he <laughs> got his neighbor's dog or something. I mean, if mm -hmm. you know, if if he uh, you know was a reasonable person and wasn't off his rocker, maybe he would have gotten along. Yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, he felt the Belizean government was out to kill him. Yeah, and you know, yeah, he feels everybody. And after out to seeing kill. this documentary on him, I don't blame yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, I did see it, and and the woman that worked for him uh, uh, in that documentary. Uh, yeah, she, yeah. She, McAfee. She we're surreal. talking about John McAfee, who is the guy who came out with the antivirus yeah. software, right? right? Made a fortune off of it, and then uh, quit his company and went to Belize for some reason. Yeah, uh, I think his he was bought out for a hundred million or something yeah. like that. But in those days that was a lot of dough. And, and then he became he became Colonel Kurtz in Apocalypse Now. <laughs> I mean yeah, he started having his own little army and uh, he he really was going going supposedly really batshit. Yeah. Mm. But uh I don't think that that's an indication of uh, what Belize is all about. Even though I hadn't, I haven't been to Belize. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I've been near there. It's, uh, it's just I don't know. I found it somewhat semi-tacky. You know, in what way? Just tacky. There was just something that didn't say I was at an on an island paradise. You know what I'm saying? It's not an island. Well, I mean, whatever, a Pacific <laughs> paradise or. Whatever yeah. with what, that part of the world. What is that? Is that the, still the, no? That's the Atlantic. Yeah. It's the Pacific, I think. No, it's yeah. the Atlantic. No. No, it's the other side. Yeah. yeah. No, oh. it's the other side. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I, I thought uh, the like yes. Yucatan and uh, uh, part of Mexico in that area was the other side. And they use the American be. dollar there. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, the Gulf. I, I thought they they use they're yeah. British, right? Uh, no. Uh, Belize is not under British rule? No. It's an English-speaking country. Yeah, yeah. And, and they use the American dollar as their, uh, as their uh, method of trade, I guess. Oh. Yeah. It's actually I, considered the Caribbean Sea. The Caribbean Sea. Okay. Oh, okay. So it is, uh, it is the uh, uh, east side, if it's the Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. So Belize is near, if I'm not mistaken, near Cuba, isn't it? But years ago, years ago, in the, is, I don't in the know, same ocean. How many of you? Excuse me, I got I, my underpants are riding up on me. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, I hate when that happens. See, so you can see how thin I've gotten. See, look at this. Look at that. Wow. Um, and I've pretty kept, soon, and I'll be able to go through a doorway sideways. I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I. Uh, I, I actually um, um, have kept it off, too. Knock on wood. You know. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. So there's this movie Radio Days, Woody Allen. And uh, this kid, played by Seth Green, it was his first movie. He was like a child actor at the time. Did he get molested? No. By other I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, but if he did. This way, it'll come out. Yeah, it'll come out, yeah. Uh, that's what he said. Um, yeah. hey. <laughs> Bada boom. Uh, his parents are always arguing, right? And one time they're arguing about which is the best ocean, the Pacific or the Atlantic. You're nuts. The Atlantic Ocean is better than the Pacific. So I throw this question at you, folks. Which is the better ocean, the Atlantic or the Pacific? Pacific. The one you're in. Huh? What, 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 no. What would you say? I, I, I would say the Pacific too, but then again, yeah, I was. There's, there's, yeah, there's more to do. Well, what, there's. Uh, it depends on what part of the Pacific. If you're up in Northern California, yeah, it's cold. It's it's 45 to 50 degrees. No, but I'm not uh, saying about swimming in it or anything. It just happens to be a better ocean. It is. It has more. It's more. Uh, uh, more water. No, not more water. It's just let's try. Right. There's a lot. There's a lot more to see there. There's a lot more scenery. Well, the the whole Pacific Rim, the nations that it takes in. I mean, they, they, we're talking about all the way to Japan. You know, I mean, I just I, if I had to live one place or the other, I would probably want to live uh, uh, in 
in in on the Pacific Ocean than than the Atlantic Ocean. Plus, the Atlantic Ocean, so, at least here do. on the East Coast, the beaches aren't that expansive. You know how you get those big, giant, deep, sandy beaches in, on the Pacific Coast? Yeah, well, you don't get you that here. Why? You don't get that here because there's a drop off. Whereas in the on the Atlantic, there's a, a shelf. That, uh, that that goes out where you can walk into the water and it's maybe three or four feet deep for a significant amount of area and then it drops off. Yeah. Whereas in in uh, in uh, California, the uh, when you get into the ocean, it drops off almost immediately and, and gets deep. And uh, that creates a different wave action. Than, OK, well, uh, everybody which, take a stand here now. Uh, wait, raise your hand if you think the Pacific is the best ocean. <laughs> okay, and and uh, Atlantic, raise your hand. Okay, Jeff. I, I should have. I had to pick something Super different. Cold. You had to what? I had to pick something different. Oh, I see. Okay, <clears throat> all right. Well, I think the scenery in California is a lot more prettier. The Atlantic. Well, what what happens when you with the Atlantic is the places in Europe, for instance, that are the most interesting. Like the Mediterranean is a great sea; it's a wonderful sea. If I had any sea to live in, it would be the Atlantic. I mean, it would be the Mediterranean, because you got all those great countries that it borders. You know, so. I would go for the Adriatic. Adiata, you know, where uh, Croatia and then you know. Going up that way. Bunch of Ruskies. Yeah, a bunch of. That's no, not Ruskies. I beg your pardon, Phil. <laughs> a bunch of, a bu bunch of good natured Slavs. Yeah. What? That's with the Slavs. Yeah. Croats. Uh, Croats. <laughs> Croatians. Well, let's talk about some stuff here. Hey, uh, do, do you know how many oceans there are? Eleven. You, <laughs> no, there's, 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 there's seven so, oceans, aren't there? Yeah, I think so. Atlantic, uh, Pacific. Or is it seven seas? Huh? See the Pacific, What's Atlantic, that? Indian, mm -hmm. Adriatic, Mediterranean. Is there a is there a is there a Caribbean? A Mediterranean's not an ocean. Mediterranean's not an ocean. Uh, no, the Caribbean is not an ocean. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me look it not up. Not that I'm an expert. Do, do you want in... me to look it up? Or yeah, yeah. Somebody else oh, looking. Who was asked the question? I mean, I'm trying to do a show here. Can <laughs> you know, look I just, Mike, I just Mark, up Mark, Michael's looking it up. The seven, the seven seas. I the sailed seven, the seven well, seas. The seven seas. Well, there's the oh wait, there, wait a ships. minute. There's the uh, Antarctic. Yeah. There's seven seas and five oceans. Oh, yeah. five oceans. I didn't know that. Oh, so the five oceans are. Uh, Arctic, yeah. Southern Pacific. Indian and Atlantic. Okay. Oh. See? And how about how about now uh, seas? Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, <laughs> what did he have to do well, with Well, there's it? Mediterranean. <laughs> there's Adriatic. Red, what? Black, Caspian, Persian Gulf. I guess they consider the Indian Ocean a sea. By the way, folks, you can use this show for credit tonight. So. <laughs> oh, excellent. Excellent. Uh, you know. <laughs> So, By the yeah. way, I use uh, a thing called the Internet to find this stuff out. The Internet? Yeah. Is that something new? It's Look it up in the encyclopedia. You'll find I'll it. I'll look it up on the Internet. It's <laughs> fake. <laughs> fake. Fake news. Hey, you remember Rose McGowan? Yeah. She's yeah, one she's, of the Harvey Weinstein's uh, right? biggest accusers. Yeah, she's been arrested. <laughs> oh, my God. What'd she do? Well, she turned, she turned herself in. She was... Uh, they were... <laughs> It was a warrant out for her arrest. Yeah, she she is one of the, she play a basketball player that was shoplifting well, well, in China. Well, she she yelled and screamed about Harvey <laughs> Weinstein raping her, and none of this none of this, by the way, uh, should should minimize Harvey Weinstein raping her. Okay, I mean, but she has been arrested, um, and uh, she's forty four. She turned herself in today in Loudoun County, Virginia, in connection with a warrant issued earlier this year. Stemming for a flight from a flight she took to Washington Dulles International Airport in January, uh, Craig Troxell, spokesman for the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office, confirmed that McGowan turned herself in, was placed under arrest, booked, photographed, and then released on five thousand dollars bond. 
The arrest warrant was reportedly issued in February by airport authority police after personal items left behind by McGowan allegedly tested positive for narcotics. It's unclear why it took nearly nine months for the warrant to come to light, but it did so just after McGowan took a central role in the outspoken, uh, as an outspoken accuser of fallen movie, movie mogul <laughs> Harvey Weinstein. She says he raped her uh, during a 1997 Sundance Film Festival. Uh, mm. And he left the drugs on her personal items. Well, you know what I would do? If I were Harvey, <laughs> not that I know him personally enough to call him Harvey, what I would do to look really interesting is I would offer to pay all her legal fees in this case. What she You can afford it. And then see, if she, and then see if she accepts it. Yeah. Well, at least a date. That would be fun. Sounds day. like she's a piece of work, too. She looks a little wacky. Let me put it yeah, that way. Yeah, she's odd. You're right. Yeah, she's, she's an oddball. She looks a little wacky. Uh, I, you know. They may have to give her the drugs back just to make her feel a little normal. <laughs> <laughs> you take these because you really need them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take one, take two. You know what? Take three. Yeah. <laughs> now, now the, here, here's a piece of news that's going to be. Of yeah. absolutely no surprise to anybody. Oh, okay. Tom Sizemore, you know who he is, don't you? Oh, he's another psycho. He was yeah. in a movie stream too. Yeah, well, uh, he's known for his roles in high profile. Uh, <laughs> boy, I can't talk tonight. High profile films, including Saving Private Ryan, True Romance, Born on the Fourth of July, was kicked off a film set in 2003 after he allegedly molested an 11 year old actress. Yeah. Another the story reports that Sizemore was ordered to leave a Utah set where the crime uh, thriller Born Killers was in production after the girl told her parents about the alleged incident. Months later, he returned for reshoots in Malibu after her parents declined to press charges. The incident has never been publicly revealed. When contacted, uh, the now 26-year-old former actress whom THR is not identifying at her request, declined to address the matter except to note that she's recently hired a lawyer to explore, explore legal action against the actor as well as her parents. Uh, now, she was sitting on his lap in that incident, and, she, and the claim was that he inserted her, his finger into her vagina. That that was the that was the claim. Well, it's not here in this article. Yeah, I, I, I read it earlier. Sizemore wasn't commenting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, he was convicted of assault and battery against Heidi Fleiss. Oh, that was his that girlfriend. Is. Yeah, two thousand three. Hmm. Uh, you know, and even Heidi Fleiss would dump him after the. Uh, Wasn't she the madam with all the hookers? I've known I've, I've known Heidi and she's really a very sweet soul. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, she dumped him. She got yeah, smart. Uh, you know, she's it, I feel sorry for her. She's uh, she's how can I call it? what can I say? I I I, I like her, but uh, she has problems. Oh, I've got to reboot my uh, camera just went Hollywood's exploding with all these It's okay things. on Skype. Uh, I know that that's a different camera. Oh. So let me uh, let me just uh, do something here. Just keep talking. This is a two you. camera shoot. Hey, uh, Bill. You know uh, Santa Cruz now just opened up a ice rink in, in the in the old casino. Yeah. What's this? Uh, what's the surprise? I go. Where did they put it, Fred? I go. It's in the old casino. There at the, at the other end of the uh, boardwalk. Mm -hmm. I go, I'll be damaged. It took that long for them to put that in. He goes, yeah. I've, I've only been to uh, Santa Cruz a couple of times. I, I don't know what the attraction is. You know, I, I'm, I'm not much for what it is. What it is, is it's, it's the ocean, and you can go fishing off the docks there. Okay. And the restaurants there are good. All right, enough of the travel log. Uh, oh, uh, did anybody <laughs> see all of the stone crow, uh, st uh, stone crab photos I posted on my Facebook? Page? No, I wouldn't. I saw, I saw your picture of you dancing up there. I can't even. I can't. I can't, even, I can't even. I can't even look at a photograph of stone crab. Stone crab. Yeah. Uh, because I, for some reason, when the juice gets on my hands, it's very caustic. Uh, you know, you know what the problem is with stone crab when they crack and, and, it. And, it, and my it, hands turn red. I mean, I'm allergic to the juice. 
the, the shell really? sharp. And uh, if you take off some of them with your finger, uh, no, it's easy that's to touch not, yourself. That, that's not it. It's, I'm tell, I told you, it's the juice yeah, or the whatever juice. Oh, the, that is very caustic to my hands. Uh, and, and also, and, and, and people who don't know what we're talking about, let me explain stone uh, crab to you. Uh, a normal crab you catch, you throw it in the pot, you cook it, you eat it, right? Stone right. crab, they go, they grab the crab, they cut off his claw, and then they throw him back in the water. And he regrows another claw. He, he regrows another claw. Now, to me, this just sounds cruel, you know, because here is this crab, and he he gets he he gets caught, he gets his claw cut off. He goes, "Oh my God, I've lost my fucking claw." Oh wait a minute, they're throwing me back in the water, and now he's just going around in circles with one claw for a while until the claw grows back, and all of a sudden he goes. Wow, you know, uh, my claw grew back. I'm now a full crab again. And then they catch him again and cut off the cr the claw. And he goes, "Oh they fuck it off, huh?" They I twisted. They they they, they, uh, they, they uh, cut it off. Yeah, yeah. I think it's cruel. I think it's very cruel. No. Yeah, I say kill, kill the whole crab. You know, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. Now I'm itching. Just get. <laughs> <laughs> right there's about uh, 500 bucks. You know, oh, yeah. on the market. This, okay. This was, uh, this was 30 bucks. Oh. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, this, this was after. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crabalage. Yeah. They look like so guess guess who's the latest person to get caught up in these sex scandals? Is it new one? George Takai. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Sulu on no, no, Star Trek. You're the Thou Gay guy. Oh, all right. You hit on Spacey. What the hell's going on now? Some uh, Star Trek fans are baffled by the response of, to one of their icons in the allegations of sexual misbehavior as George DeKai at one point offered a strange excuse for the story that's been unfolding around him. Let me put my glasses on so I can read this properly. This is like a another one from George Takei, Alex. Takei, Takei. Yeah, it's Takei, another one Takei. From, the, from the 1980s. Anyway... Um, the accuser, Scott R. Brunton, who was 23 at the time of the alleged incident, claims that Takei uh, took advantage of him uh, when he was his most vulnerable. Oh, oh, In an oh, interview with so THR, Brunton describes like becoming dizzy and apparently passed out after having drinks during a visit to Takei, Takei's home. I'm trying to say it right. The next thing I remember I was coming to and I had my pants down around my ankles and he was groping my crotch and trying to get my underwear off and feeling me up at the same time trying to get his hands down my underwear. It came, I came to and said, what are you doing? And he said, oh my. No, he said, um, that was my Takai impression. There. He said, oh my. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> and said, what are you doing? And he said, I, I, I don't want to do this, he goes. You need to relax. I'm just trying to make you comfortable. Get comfortable. I said, no, I don't want to do this. And I pushed him off. He said, okay, fine. I would have loved to have heard this whole exchange in Takai's voice. Um, Takai denied Brunton's allegations in a series of tweets to Newsweek and reports Takai uh, 80 went back on Twitter with an odd follow-up. Listen to this. Days later, he tweeted two messages suggesting that Russia was behind the story promoting the allegations using bots. I am accustomed to their practices, he wrote. He eventually deleted both tweets. Supposedly, he says that when he wrote something about Russians, uh, the Russians hacked his account and uh, took it, <laughs> kind of took it down for a while. He should have said it was Vulcans. Yeah, right. It was him. Uh, FX has suffered severed ties with uh, with uh, Louis C.K. As has his longtime uh, partner, manager. Well, his manager, but his partner, 
Pamela Adlin, who wrote a lot of the episodes of Louie, has her own show that he produces, and they both write together called uh, Better Things. A was very she in Californication? Uh, yes, she was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and he produced one of the shows still on the air. Uh, what's the name of that show? She's she's doing a show right now. But he's a executive yeah, producer. Better better things. Yeah. Better things. Better That's things. a great show. Yeah, it's a great show. Um, here's here's what, uh, and also you know what else she plays on television, but most people don't know this. Uh, the Big Bang Theory. One of the characters had a baby, and she plays the voice of the baby. Because she, she plays a lot of voices. Well, she was a voice uh, cartoon character voice person, yeah. and it, for years. Longtime CK collaborator Pamela Adlin, who stars in Better Things, blah, 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 uh, has, has said that she uh, is going to drop uh, her manager, Becky, what's his name? Uh, Dave Becky. Um, yeah. and she's part of Ways with Him and their production company, Three Arts Entertainment. Uh, she says she doesn't want anything to do with him, doesn't want anything to do with Louie. Uh, but on the other hand, FX has renewed the show. So apparently she can still go ahead and do it, but it'll have to be without them. She released a statement saying she and her family were devastated and in shock after the admission of abhorrent behavior by my friend and partner, Louis C.K. She added that she felt deep sorrow and empathy for the women who have come forward. Now, I've got a little problem with this. Uh, uh, in talking with Will Durst, he says, we've known for years now about this kind of behavior on Louis C.K.'s part. It just was, it was, an, it was one of those open secrets that everybody knew about in the business. I never heard it, but then again, I've been kind of out of the comedy business for quite a while. Uh, my question is, if she was working that close with Louis C.K., where they were writing all those shows together... And they were producing all those shows together. Don't you think she knew something? I mean, how could she have a? How could she suddenly? It everybody's becoming like uh, it's been said a lot lately. Like Inspector Renault in uh, in Casablanca when he goes uh, gambling in Casablanca. I can't believe such a thing is going on. And then the guy comes up and says, "Here are your winnings." You know, uh, <laughs> that's you would think that one of those women would have right. confided into Pamela. You know, is what's going you, on. you would think that Pamela, if 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 Will Durst, who isn't even in in the the circle, okay, no, knew about it and heard the rumors, yeah, you're right about that. Then how did Pamela Adlin not hear about the rumors? And is she not now taking this posture because she wants to throw him to the wolves to save her own career? Yeah, I think you're right, Alex. The second one, like, you she think wants that to career just needs to save What? I mean, Everyone should distance themselves, they, really. I, do you think her career needs saving? I, I don't think that she's got a negative, uh, uh, you know, a negative. No, deal. but if she still wants to do business with Louis C.K. and stands behind Louis, she would. You know, because this is this is a stink that kind of rubs off on you now. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so I mean, what do you? Sorry. What did what? you guys talk about the uh, the two that they're calling for in the Senate and the or the House? There's two there now. Yeah, but they don't. They haven't said who they are, have they? No, they haven't. No, I didn't know if you guys talked about that or not. Yeah, no, uh, we didn't talk about it. But, uh, I mean, they're coming out of the woodwork. Well, well what are they really after Mendez, Menendez for? Uh, not the Menendez brothers, but there's a, a congressman, that uh, Democratic congressman from, from California. No, uh, not oh, from, he was no, taking not from gifts. California, New Jersey. Oh, it was New Jersey? Yeah, he was yeah, taking boy. gifts. That, Everybody have a sex. drink. Have a drink. Hey! <laughs> you know, there's a little, little part of the thing that I... Uh, uh, you're 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 so ready to get drunk for a guy that doesn't drink. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You know, I think now here's a question. Let's say Louis C.K. comes forward in an interview and says, "Listen, I have a problem, and I'm going to get help." No, no, he said, already said it. Said, oh, he did. Oh, yeah, okay. he already yeah. he already he admitted. He was the first to admit it. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I'll tell you something. I think it's wonderful that Louis C.K. admitted it. Okay, yeah, he, but what he's, he's done problem. is he's proved something. Do not admit it. Yeah. Because right it's like that. it's not like he admits it, and then everybody goes, "Okay, now go seek some help and 
We're with you, Louie. No, they're still f- dropping him from FX and dropping yeah. him from John Stewart's benefit. <laughs> you wow. know, um, just happens faster. Like just as fast as Weinstein lost. His just job. as fast as Weinstein, <laughs> even though he said, "I did it. I'm sorry. I'm going to seek help. It's it's something I shouldn't have done. I feel, you know, horrible about it." Blah 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 blah. So uh, why even do that? Did, because at that point, everybody's going to go. Well, he admitted to it. It's this this kind of this kind of behavior was, was almost to... accepted and and allowed for many many years. Now all of a sudden no, the tide it, has it, turned. It, it, was, it, being... it wasn't it wasn't tolerated. It was ignored. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's the same thing. Well, no, you know? no, that, that maybe maybe ignored is not right. Maybe it's more like just bypassed. Everybody knew it was happening. Nobody said nothing. They stuck their head in the sand. All the women were scared to say Wait a minute. anything. Everybody. Yeah. Since Pamela, uh, exactly. Out. Everybody knew it you was know, going they, on. How many times have you heard the term casting couch in your lifetime? Mm-hmm. That's what we're talking about is the casting couch. Yep. Yeah. You know, and uh, there were woman, women who would do what it took to get the part. You and know, that's the point. There's probably a bunch of them that just aren't saying anything at all, too. Imagine how many are back there doing that, not saying or anything. Or climb the ladder, you know. Yeah. Uh, maybe they had the job, but they wanted to. Yeah. Uh, yes, Tony. Tony? Yeah, oh, you know what's going to action? I didn't follow the whole Louis C.K. story, but let's say the two women were in his room. Why couldn't they just pick up and leave then? Well, uh, I asked that question, too. You know, I mean... Uh, I, you know, I, I would like to buy the argument that, oh, say, Renee would give on this program about these women felt powerless because this was a powerful man and so on. But then what you're doing is you're saying that women are so weak that they have no individual ability to just say, fuck it, I'm not putting up with this. You and know, like, apparently, oh, he's or out of respect. apparently he, he said... Uh, you know, what I said about him was he was a gentleman. At least he asked them if he could do it first, you know, which is, you okay. know. Uh, but the the fact of the matter was that these women sat there and they didn't say no and they didn't turn around and leave, which they have the right to do, you know. And now Amy's going to tell me I'm full of shit. <laughs> um <laughs> Well, I, you know, I'm sitting here listening to a room full of men, as it were. Now you're being a sexist. <laughs> uh, ta- a talk about... You're being a sexist. ...sexual assault. If I'm being a sexist, then I am. But it's a room full of men. There was no woman's voice. Was there a woman's voice before I called no. in? And there still there isn't. Is there now. still isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Drink! Yeah. I mean... So, I didn't call in to tell you you're full of shit. What I called in <laughs> to say was, in many of these cases, they were not giving consent. And they were told, for example, with the no, latest... We're not talking about that. We weren't talking about that now. We're talking about Louis C.K.'s particular C. K. situation. Which, you're talking which, about by Louis C.K. Which, by the way, differs... Which is a different... Differs a great deal... From, di- from from Weinstein and di- differs differs a great deal from uh, from Kevin Spacey, and by giving and, it the same weight, we diminish Weinstein's. Well, I actually have not been hearing people give it the same weight. I actually have have heard that. Well, first number one, he admitted to it. Number two, uh, it wasn't a case of. Um, Forcing himself on someone. It, it wasn't molestation. It, it wasn't molestation. It wasn't right. a, a case where he was using his position to tell people, you can't tell anyone because if you do, I'll ruin your career. Right. Right. Or your so, life. But, but the point is, we didn't give it this, it, we shouldn't give it the same weight, but in no. penalties, in penalties to Louis C.K., we are. He's lost his job at netflix he's lost they're taking all his videos off of hbo his movie wasn't allowed to open so whatever we did in spite of his i'm sorry his mea culpa a very i think good letter that he wrote uh Mm -hmm. uh we aren't honoring that with a little bit of forgiveness 
Okay. Mm -hmm. and I think so, these are all knee-jerk reactions, and I think he'll come back faster I than don't think so. would ever. I don't think well, so. Well, you know what's astounding to me is the only person who's not gotten any, who actually has been rewarded in spite of multiple double-digit accusations of sexual harassment and sexual assault and admitting to them on the radio and the TV uh, is the current president of the United States. Well, you're absolutely correct. Uh, in fact, there's even an assertion that he had sex with a 14-year-old girl, which puts him in the Roy Moore Club. But here's the difference. Right. Number one, he's the president of the United States, and he can't be charged with a crime right now. Oh, yes, he can. He can? He's charged with being stupid. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, it's, it, it, there are about. cases in court. I, I've been told you have to wait till he's no longer president before you can charge him with it. No. Not true. Not true? Not true. Okay. Not true. Uh, but, but there is but, but, but the forget political about, forget about, forget solution. About, forget forget about the Trump bashing at this moment. Let's let's go to the subject at hand here. And that is, <laughs> and I was mentioning this to, to Will earlier. We all remember the first person to be accused of this kind of behavior was Woody Allen, if you may remember. Mm -hmm. And yet Woody today is making movies and still has a successful career and I think uh, uh, has, uh, ha has had one of his most successful films ever in the, just the last couple of years since that thing. If that, uh, what about that, if that ex same exact uh, thing happened to him right now, He'd never be making another movie. What about Fatty Arbuckle? And he didn't do anything. Well, th well that that's too so that's old a story, that story that nobody even knows who we're talking about. Okay, but no, mm -hmm. Fatty Arbuckle again did, was a, was a comedian in movies and silent films who did absolutely nothing, and yet he rented the room. He rented the room at the St. Francis right. Hotel, and and uh, he wasn't even there. He was in L.A. at the time. And yet there were three trials, in which in the final trial, the judge admonished uh, everyone after he was found not guilty in the third trial that this has been one of the biggest wrongs ever done to a human being in this country in, in the courts. Mm -hmm. And uh, yet he never worked. He never was able to work under his name again. He worked as a director under the name Will Be Good. Uh, you know. Also, most of his films, they, they took the silver content off and destroyed the films. No, they didn't take the silver content off. They, uh, what they, uh, they did even worse than that. Uh, in the old days, because it was silver nitrate film, it was highly explosive. And so if they wanted to do an explosion or a fire in a movie, they simply lit old film stock on fire, and they used his films. Wow. So that about 90% of his work has completely disappeared. But really and, and in the end, he died very, very young in his 30s. Uh, and, they, and his wife said he died of a broken heart. But what I'm saying is if Woody Allen had been accused right now in this atmosphere, he'd never mm -hmm. work again. Same thing, yeah. just now. Uh, they'd yank everything. Huh? Yeah. They'd, they'd yank oh, everything. Yeah. Yeah, well, what's happening now is it's finally like, it's all of like these what, women are coming forward. It was like what the, Russian, and, and what the Russians did to Stalin. I mean, they, it, all these people feel that by purging themselves of, his, of Louis C.K.'s material, they will no longer have to have the taint of Louis C.K. It's, it's almost like a in the purge of Stalin in the Soviet Union when they started pulling down all the statues and all the memorabilia. Mm -hmm. Yes, what were yeah. you saying? Uh, I, I don't think that... He, he's going to be gone forever. I, I think that, you know, I think most people do see that as different. Um, I, you know, Harvey Weinstein is another matter. But, uh, but people do, uh, in fact, I saw a thread on Facebook recently that was like, rate, um, and it was Weinstein and uh spacey and um who are we talking about well you, louis ck louis ck and yeah. so and everybody was like yeah i think maybe one person said they're all bad 
But well, everybody kind of gave yeah. Louis C.K. Well, a, a bit of a pass. Well, somebody said, the trouble is that I'm going to have is anytime I see Louis C.K. on stage, I'm going to think about him jerking off in front of those women, and it's going to make me laugh. And I said, well, that's what Louis C.K. wants you to do. Uh, that's right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, well, there are some people to this day who won't go to Woody Allen movies because of what he was accused of. There are people that will not go to Woody Allen movies. You're absolutely correct. You mm -hmm. know, um, uh, uh, there's no. Would you just send me a picture of Joe Biden groping a woman? Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. You're incorrigible, Phil. <laughs> you really are. You're yeah, absolutely you're incorrigible. Uh, uh, but. You know, I mean, all I'm saying is, is that uh, um, I, I just That's Joe's I, Christmas photo, huh? Joe's Christmas card photo. Yeah, it's not his wife, though. Oh, it's not his wife. Okay, it's not funny, Phil. Joe, <laughs> Joe Biden is a sweet guy. Man, he's, he's an actual the treasure. Next guy to go down, huh? He's the next guy to go no, down. The next guy, uh, well, he's you know, a, Amy, Amy's hard. right. One of the biggest, one of the biggest uh, people in all of this that could be brought down would be Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And yet they're keeping kind of clear of that one, you know. Uh, and I find that somewhat hypocritical. Uh, mm -hmm. And I find that the Republicans, you know. The Republicans are absolutely, half of them are for Roy Moore, half of them aren't for Roy Moore. And my feeling about the immorality of the Republicans is it shouldn't be 50-50. It should be 100% going what this, what this guy did was wrong. When he was banned from a mall for trolling for young girls and yeah. it's on the record, isn't that enough for you? Right. I thought it was more than fifty-fifty. It's really it's just, just half. Aiming. Yeah, something it's like half thing. from what I from what I saw. It, it's know. not. I mean, if you're talking about Alabama Republicans, there's oh. not even that half that are against. Oh, him. I think if the election finally gets held, I think he's going to win. I, I wouldn't be surprised because some. People, I mean, look, look month, at Donald right? Trump. Because some people down there, when interviewed, said. Better to have a guy who who had sex with a fourteen year old than a Democrat. That Alabama was their attitude. Alabama needs to be broken off the United States and pushed into the Gulf. Yeah. Alabama is so fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. uh, why don't you just attach Florida to that too while you're at it? Yeah, yeah. Florida, oh, good. I'm glad you feel that way, Michael, because I've often wanted to just you know, if I had a, uh, I often dreamed of having a giant buzz saw that could just take that whole thing and float it out into the ocean. Yeah, well, make you know, island. with all that anti-Florida talk, there's going to be a whole bunch of those. You're going to dream tonight about stone crab legs. Oh, oh, oh I'm not oh, shut oh, up, Bill. Oh, oh, oh. Did you see that big bucket? Shut of up, shit? Bill. You know? Uh, <laughs> it's you know, I, I mean. Who's got an EpiPen? How about <laughs> Michigan and Pennsylvania and all those places Wisconsin that after... And, and after double digit women came out and said, you know, and they showed all the court records of the women in the past that have sued him, um, that still voted for him. Uh, uh, can we can we can we get rid of those uh, states wait too? V voted for who? You're talking about more? Donald Trump. Donald oh, Trump. Trump. Yeah. There so, were, there you were, know, no. before it, it, before he totally did us in Alabama. It was only a few counties that made the difference in those states. So when you say that that's those states went for him, uh, it was you know he he really did a good job of finding those counties where he was able to get the votes uh, to win the state. Let me ask yeah. let me ask uh, uh, me Amy something. How do you feel about Hillary now in the light of Donna Brazil's accusations? Yeah, yeah. I. I still think Hillary would have been a much better person. No, that's not the question I asked crook. you. That's not the question no, I asked you. She was not a crook, and that is not what Donna Brazil said. And, uh, Donna Brazil, people are attributing uh, all Donna sorts Brazil of things to Donna Brazil that Donna Brazil has not said. She, but basically she intimated that the fix was in. Basically she, what she I said see, was she, that the Democrats that were running the Democratic Party were for the Democratic candidate and not the one that wasn't a Democrat. 
But no, wait a minute. Stanton, Bernie was a Democrat. Running is a Democrat. No, Bernie is still not a Democrat. Bernie. He left the day after the primary. Yes. He joined the day before the primary. And Bernie, I, I Bernie, you, so Bernie, Bernie wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Bernie could. He himself does. Bernie, he's, not but he's still a progressive in his mind. It doesn't matter what you label him. He's a progressive. But it was the Democratic well, Party. Well, Bernie, Bernie, among That's other true. things, always voted with the Democrats. Was always part of the considered part of the Democratic bloc. And therefore, if it looks like a duck and smells like a duck and quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. But he wasn't a member of the caucus. You know, and that's when... Not, I mean, he was a member of the caucus. He was not a well, member isn't of the that, Isn't that a stunk. full of crap attitude? I knew something stunk when they had these super delegates. The super delegates. I remember that. Know? And, and all, all of a sudden... The, the, it wouldn't have made a difference. I'm sorry. It wouldn't have made a difference. Uh, but it, it made him yeah, seem like Jeff, a loser please. in the beginning. Although I always thought he was a loser, and, and the same with Hillary, uh, and I was glad that they both, you know, uh, ended up drowning in their own stink. But, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, they they were so corrupt, the, the DNC and Hillary, and they Wait, were complicit. But why don't you stop lying and let Jeff talk? Lying? Hey, what about wait a minute? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jeff, Jeff has it wants to talk, Phil. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Phil. I, I think there's there's two things that we have to consider. Yeah. That 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 the president is not a Republican, and nobody seemed to have too much problem about that. The Republicans did. <laughs> well, I hope they let, they let him get voted. No. He get, became president. Wait, Phil. Everything me, they do. Phil, could I? Yeah. The other part is that as far as the Democrats go, yes, uh, our friend from uh, New Hampshire uh, may not be uh, a, a pure uh, Democrat. You know, he was a independent guy. He's a socialist. But same time, they allowed him to come in their competition to decide who is going to be the potential president. Yes, you're absolutely and right. He was pretty damn close, wasn't he? Well, I mean, it, wait, it wait, wait, actually... wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What he's saying okay. really has a lot of validity, and that is they did allow him to run in the primaries, to run as a Democrat, and if they did that, then there should have been all fairness given to him, and according to Donna Brazil, there, that fairness they wasn't there. did it because I didn't there. think he had a chance. Right, wait. Okay, so let me address all of these things. Good calculated properly. All right. all right. So first of all, the reason that he ran as a Democrat instead of as an independent is because when you join the Democratic Party, that gives you at least 30% or more of the vote. And he couldn't have won as an independent. So he ran as a Democrat, even though all of these years he's talked bad about, even though he caucused with the Democrats, he's talked bad about the Democratic Party. That's smart. And so, uh, yes, he joined. It's, it's like, if you know, it was a club that he didn't want to join, but then he joined in order to become president of that club. And then, well, uh, you know, but I, 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 I object to having to be a member of that club. Because I happen to be uh, registered as an independent. And the reason I registered as an independent is that I, I don't want to feel that I am forced to vote a, a company line, so to speak, or a political line. And uh, I think there are a lot of people like that in this country. But if I ran for political office and I had to run as something, I would run as a Democrat. And I would be allowed to run as a Democrat. Yes, Just like would. everybody sitting around wondering... If Mark Cuban runs for president, what he's going to run as. And he says he'd like to run as a Republican and go up against Trump. But uh, a lot of people, including, uh, what, what's his name, uh, the guy uh, uh, who was uh, Trump's uh, aide de camp, Bannon. Uh, Bannon. Uh, he's been doing some talks. He's been talking to Bannon, who has said to him, run as a Democrat. Not that he wants him to run as a Democrat because. He'll screw up the Democratic Party, but because he just says, you have a better chance of winning this thing if you run as a Democrat. So, you um, know, there are a lot of people who don't, who are political agnostics, okay? That's, that's fine. What I am saying is 
the reason that he ran as a Democrat and a party he was not a part of was because there are advantages. Because let me tell you something, as a political candidate, it's not a one-person show. It takes a lot of people to run a campaign, even when you're running for something like county clerk, like me. It doesn't excuse what the Democrats in. Wait, wait, let me answer you, because I'm, I'm getting to that. All right? So uh, it was a fair race. Yes, they were going to do what they could to give advantage to the person who had been working with the party, who was supporting the down-ballot races, who was working for to advance the whole party, who had been there for years and years. It was not a fair race. Look, was you, can count the, was no, you can count the vote it, 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 any it, it, way it, it, you want. Even he the still was not going to win. I'm not talking about counting the votes. I'm talking about that the, that the Democrats manipulated their own party and their own people the to debate get election. them away from Bernie. Yeah, that was kind of that was. Yeah, uh, Donna Brazil said that she gave the debate questions to uh, Hillary Clinton. WikiLeaks. And they and they also went to Bernie. WikiLeaks. I I, I didn't read anything about that. WikiLeaks. Um, <laughs> WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. Fake news. Wikileaks. It's not fake news. Listen, oh, by the, um, yeah. is that a shop this curtain? Is a, this or a is, y'all are accounting a lot of stuff to Donna Brazil that she has not said. Well, anyway, let me also bring up one last thing she before said, she wrote it in her book. Let me. Let me <laughs> she wrote in the book. <laughs> WikiLeaks, and she regrets it. Yeah, WikiLeaks. <laughs> WikiLeaks. Imagine Hillary Clinton was in the room with Louis C.K. <laughs> yes, uh, I don't Jeff. Think he, I don't Jeff, think he pulled out for her. Thank you, Jeff. I, I, I listened to Mr. Brazil uh, I to to on TV by a couple of other people. And I'm going to tell you, she, she often did not want to answer the question. And, and, and the reason she, she gave her example as to why not to answer those questions is she says, well, read it in my book. It's written in the 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 book. You know what? She didn't want to answer half of those pictures because she thinks she's that full of shit. But she didn't like them and she's full of shit. Uh, yeah, I agree with him. He's right. She's trying to sell a book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's By the way, let me let, let me let me finish with one last quick story here. Nothing we really have to discuss much. And there's two, two members of the House of Representatives are calling for an investigation into whether Federal Communications Commission Chairman Ajit Pai has been improperly clearing regular regulatory hurdles for the Sinclair Broadcast Group's pending acquisition of Tribune Media. Elijah Cummings and Frank Pallone Jr. sent a letter to. FCC Inspector General on Monday asking uh, uh, he probe whether Chairman Ajit Pai had been the clearing the way for the $3.9 billion deal. Uh, Pallone and top Democrats in the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee and Energy and Commerce Committee respectively wrote in the letter, we request you examine how the FCC has conducted its business with regard to Sinclair. Here's the interesting part of it. Sinclair is the largest owner of local television broadcasters in the United States, and if its Tribune purchase is approved by the FCC, the media conglomerate will be able to reach more than two-thirds of the nation's television audience, which exceeds the current 39% limit. And as we all know, Sinclair is this ultra-conservative lie factory. You want to talk about Sebastian fake news. Sebastian Gorka. Yeah, yeah. And the FCC's drop of regulations like flies right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, it, it it's getting pretty terrible out there. I'll let y'all talk about that. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, go get ready for the She's got to go do her show, which she does next with uh, with uh, Jack Bishop. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, let me see. I got rid of her. Let me get rid of the picture. That way. There we go. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh Gee, uh, we're kind of uh, slowly uh, running out of time here. Uh, any last words of wisdom from any of you on anything in particular? WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. Well, I'll tell you something funny tomorrow. Huh? 
one of the guys who worked, the late, my cousin baked the cake, Alex. I'll let you know fast. That's all shaking. And the guy was eating the cake, and my cousin's hair was in the cake. He pulled it out of his mouth. I, I didn't even eat it. My mother never lets me eat anything in there because she's messy. She, your mother never lets you eat she's, anything? Because she's a little messy, my cousin. So when he was eating the cake, her hair must have gotten in the icing. He pulled it out like a piece of hair. It was disgusting. Almost <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> oh, this is all God. Oh, God. Well, she said, whatever you anyway. do, don't eat anything. I made like I was eating. I threw hey, it out. I got to start playing a theme song here. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, somebody's not going to. It must have been my accident. Guys. There we go. There we go. There's our theme. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks to Amy who joined us. Also, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Michael. Call us some more. Really love having you here. And, of course, Kevin, thank you so much as well. Let me put everybody small here again. <laughs> What am I doing? I'm just screwing up like crazy here. Everybody, wave a big goodbye and say goodbye to everybody. And we'll see you again, uh, let's see, tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, Jack and Amy are next. Yes, Jack and Amy are next. And then after that, at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning is Connections. I'm Alex Benesee. Tomorrow, as I said, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always... If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>